Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff with Max Stadium coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the iOS application that's built for Plex. Now, in the series on Plex, we've covered how to set Plex up and how to get it running on your Mac Mini hosted at Mac Stadium. And so now what we're talking about is how do you access your media once you've got it up there and once you've got the server running. And so we're going to look today at how you access it from your iOS devices. Now, uh, Plex is also available not just for iOS, but on Android as well. So uh, you can download it from the Android store. And uh, it's a really great way to be able to take your media with you. Uh, as you can see, just even from the screenshots here, that the uh, interface is very similar to what we're used to uh, in looking at the uh, Plex web interface. Uh, but it's all brought to you on your iOS device. And so I believe it's uh, $4.99 uh, for the application. Uh, unless you buy a Plex Pass, uh, I believe that uh, with the Plex Pass, they give you the application for free. So uh, I've already gotten it, so let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at Plex. And so here we are in the Plex interface, and you can see it says it's lonely because uh, it's not uh, connected to a server because you need to sign in uh, to a Plex server to make that happen. And so we're going to want to uh, sign in. So what we're going to do is go over to the little gear icon in the bottom. And we're just going to tap on that. And you can see we've got this, uh, this settings uh, library here. And you can see right where we have account. I'm just going to tap on that. And here you have your user ID and password. And that's your MyPlex account uh, that you've set up. You want to put that information in here. So I'm just going to add that right now. And then we'll uh, see where it goes. Okay, so now I've got all the information in there. So now I just tap sign in. And now it's going to sign me into my MyPlex account. And you can see right here, uh, it talks about synced content sharing. And so it can share uh, your synced content with other Plex apps that are on your network. So if you've got things that are actually synced, that you've uh, set up the sync for on your app, you can actually have that content uh, you know, available on other devices. So I can choose whether I want to share my synced content or don't share it. And so I'm just going to say share uh, the content because that way it makes it a little bit easier for me if I want to uh, have access to it. Let's tap Next. And then you have photo album sharing. And so again, it can uh, share my iPad's photo albums with other Plex apps uh, in my network. And so I want to uh, go ahead and share that. So we're just going to kind of do all the features here. It says it's done. So it like access to my photos. So I'm just going to OK that. And so now it wants to uh, add a URL into my queue. So would I add, like to add this uh, particular URL uh, to my queue, so it was probably a uh, screen that I was on that had a video. So I'm just going to say, okay, why not? Let's add it into the queue. It's going to queue that up for me uh, and add it in there. And so you can see that now I am uh, I'm logged into my Plex account. Now you notice uh, on this screen here, uh, as that thing's still queuing in the background, unable to do it. That's okay. We'll do that later. Uh, you'll notice that uh, it has the ability to enter a Plex Pass subscription. So if you had a Plex Pass, you could add that in here. Uh, I don't have one right now uh, to demonstrate, but uh, we'll talk about that a little later uh, when you get to see the different features of it. And you can manage your subscription online. So there our account. We're all logged in. So let me just go back, um, go back to the settings. I'm just going to go off the screen just for a second because I want to show you the interface. And so as you can see here, it looks very similar to what you see on your Plex interface. Uh, through the web application and through the actual manager that we talked about on your Mac Stadium server. So here we have all of our uh, information at the top. We've got your library, your channels, and your queue. Uh, you can see here I've got my uh, home movies uh, that are on there. And so there's the home movies that I have. And so it loads those up. And again, this is all being loaded from my uh, server at Mac Stadium. So if I just tap the, uh, just tap the home button here, we'll go back home. You can see that uh, if I tap on my movies, See that I've got all of my movie uh, information there uh, all lined up. If I tap the little eye right here, uh, it will give me more information uh, on that movie with all of the different metadata that I've got on there, uh, as well as the ability to mark it as red, to start as a favorite. Uh, and I've got a little sub menu right here that gives me all the information about the media. Uh, so all that's built right in uh, to the application here. Uh, you'll also notice at the top there's a little uh, download uh, arrow there that allows me to download the media and uh, get that downloaded right onto my uh, application here. So again, uh, pretty pretty neat. Let me just uh, tap off of this for a minute. I'm not going to play it because I am uh, to record this. I'm airplaying this onto my computer, and so it'll just play it on the full screen of my computer. But it will play it right off of the uh, right off the server. So you can see we've got uh, all of that information that's sitting right there. Uh, if I just uh, tap the little uh, menu item there, you can see that it pulls out the side menu. And it's got all of my information on how I want to, uh, I can view it by rating if I want to, and then it'll just sort of change, you know, take a look at it and say, what, how many stars do I want to view it by? 
Uh, I can view it by, um, you know, uh, recently viewed, and uh, it'll show up that way. I can say uh, all movies and come back to it, and it'll load all my movies again. And then I've got all the different filters down below by content and year and uh, all of that, resolution, all kinds of things that I can sort by. So if I just tap that little menu thing, it just slides right back over. All right, let's go back into the home area here. Uh, you can see I've got my channels as well. I've got my, you know, Yahoo, the Apple Movie Trailers. I've got uh, iTunes on there uh, as well. So it'll pull that content. So if I just tap on uh, iTunes, for instance, uh, it's now going to tap into my iTunes library that I've got, again, uh, on my server there at Mac Stadium. And you can see there is the album that I had that I showed earlier. So I could even play my iTunes music uh, that's sitting on the server on here as well. And then, of course, down below you can see the queue uh, with the items that I have queued up. And you've also got a recently added uh, area at the bottom that just kind of shows the order in which we've added uh, the uh, various uh, content into. So, uh, again, it's a full, full featured uh, Plex app right here on your iOS device. So let's take a look at a few other things. Uh, you'll notice down at the bottom, we've got a menu bar. We've got a home button, which takes us right back to this page here. We've also got a refresh uh, button there that'll refresh the content just in case you've added something or, or any of that information. Uh, you'll notice here we've got a little, uh, you know, kind of a share area here uh, where if we're playing media, we can uh, share it uh, from that device onto my Plex app or uh, on the reverse there. So I'm just going to tap off of that. Uh, again, if I tap the little uh, Plex icon there, you can see the servers that I've got running. Um, the different media servers that I have uh, on my local network will show up here, or I can add uh, a connection manually and configure it that way. Uh, so I don't have any of that going, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, then you've got the little uh, um, friends uh, area down here where you can actually add friends. And so if you've got other friends that have Plex, you can share uh, some of your content back and forth uh, with one another. And so that, again, kind of adds a social element to it, uh, but it also allows you to share that content. So I was going to tap off of that and then uh, we can come back into settings and so let's just go through the settings a little bit just so you can see some of the things that you can do with the application uh, first of all you've got uh, on the home screen uh, you can order uh, your different rows there on how you want them to show up uh, I can take off things that I don't want to have on there so if I didn't want my queue on there I can just tap this and you'll uh, the queue will disappear once I get out of it or tap that to have it I can just grab uh, something and move it up to the top. Let's say I want to move the queue uh, in front of my channels. I just kind of lift it up and uh, do that and go back to uh, settings. And you'll notice in the background, you'll see, if I just tap off it, you'll see that it's changed the order there. So I can do a little bit of customizing here. Let me go back into the settings. Uh, so those are some things that I can do uh, with the home screen. I can also tap default and it'll go put everything right back where it was uh, before and just kind of move them back. Again, we looked at the account area already. This is where you log into your account. Uh, you also notice we've got a sync uh, area here where we can uh, have default quality or we can change the quality to whatever we want, how we want it to sync. So again, depending on uh, the size of the files uh, and how long you want it to take, you can sync uh, just kind of the various things with video, audio, and uh, the picture uh, pictures, if you got pictures you're syncing as well. And then you can uh, sync automatically too. You can sync when opening Plex or when modifying content. Uh, so it'll do that. And then you can also set your storage limit. And so it says how many uh, gigs you have in use. And I got 10 gigs available. And so you can kind of move the slider to set that the way you want to. And then it'll show you your synced content as well. Let's go back to uh, settings here. Uh, video, we can also set the uh, video quality. So when we're on local Wi-Fi, what quality do we want it to be? Uh, we can actually uh, set that so that you can get it to exactly where you want it to be. Sometimes we have different bandwidths. Um, and so depending on that, we can set it up so that uh, the video will look right. Uh, the same with remote Wi-Fi. So when you're at a, a remote uh, location and you're uh, in Wi-Fi. So again, like it says, higher quality settings provide better looking video but require more bandwidth. So just depending on where you are, you can play with those settings if everything doesn't come out right. Uh, you can also lock the player in landscape mode. Uh, you can set the subtitle size if you've got that, and then you can do an audio boost if you need to. And then you have TV out uh, enabled as well if you connected this to a television and wanted to, uh, to view it that way. Let's go back out of there. You can do the same thing with your audio in the application. So we have th you can have theme music in the background in the volume so that when you go into uh, certain movies uh, and things like that or television shows that have theme music, it'll play that music uh, for you, that background music. And it's kind of neat. You know, it just kind of adds to the, uh, to the uh, feel of the application. Now we've also got, uh, you can see here, mobile uh, media uh, server. 
So that's enabled so that we can use that. You can share sync content and share photo albums. So when we said yes to sharing our sync content and photo albums, we turned on this mobile media server so that the things that we have here on our iOS app, we can share with other people, such as our photos and, and sync content. Let's go back into settings here. And then you've got advanced uh, where you can just set up things like finding nearby servers, uh, how you want to transcode, uh, your player, uh, again, this clearing the cache storage, uh, analytics, all that kind of stuff is right in there. Again, not, not too much that you need to play with. Uh, you can say only show synced uh, libraries, and so when you throw that switch, it'll stop showing the things that are online and only show what's synced. Uh, and then you've got your help and support and about. And so that kind of gives you a good, uh, good overview of all of those uh, settings that you've got there on the application. So that kind of gives you an overview uh, of the Plex iOS app. As you can see, uh, it works really great. Uh, nice to have your content uh, on your Mac Stadium server and then be able to access it anywhere on your iOS devices when you need it uh, and not have to worry about whether things are up or not because, uh, you know, as you know, your, uh, your Mac Stadium uh, server is on 24-7 and uh, everything should be available to you when you need it. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next time with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac in a hosted environment.